Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another black powder boot camp. And this one is the video that we've talked about about cannons and how they differ from muskets and archery and hand axes and and daggers and kicking dirt up in people's faces. Okay, the artillery piece was used throughout the black powder period. It's what you load the cannon with black powder, light it up, and fire a big chunk of iron out towards your foe, hoping to hit someone. And the destructive power of a cannon in the uh, this period, the musket era, was devastating. Try to imagine uh, like a 12-pound a ball of iron. This ball is traveling at 900 feet per second. I mean, this sucker is flying, right? And when it hits you, it's not a bullet. It's a 12-pound it's a ball. Because, you know, bullets are in the measured in ounces. So, let's say, hypothetically, you get hit in the chest. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but you get hit in the chest. You do not die. You explode. Your body parts go flying in every direction. I know I'm being gross, but I'm just saying. You get hit, you explode, your body parts fly everywhere, your bone fragments fly out. You become a fragmentation grenade. Basically, when that ball collides with you, you splatter. And when that happens, not only are you putting blood and gore on your allies, your buddies, but you're also killing them as well. Because your arm goes flying, or your skull goes flying, or your rib cage, one of the ribs punctures your friend in the lungs. Because you're no more, you're no longer there. Okay. Now, what happens to that ball? Does it just lodge itself in your chest? No. It keeps going. And it kills like 15 people because it hits the guy behind you, and the guy behind him, and the guy behind him until it hits the ground. And then what does it do? It bounces. So it bounces up and then it hits more people. Or it hits a rock and goes like at an angle off like 45 degrees to the right and then it cuts through your formation. It doesn't stop. You know, one person's body doesn't stop a cannonball. It just like shreds into the unit. And that's with a solid piece. Now there are howitzers that fire hollow cannonballs. These hollow cannonballs are, uh, they when, when the cannon fires, it ignites the fuse of the cannonball, and, when it, and then it flies out a set distance, and then it'll explode. So when it explodes, it becomes just like an HE shell from modern days, you got metal fragments flying in every direction because of the explosion. There's also something called grape or chain shot or canister. And these shots are, imagine me taking a bunch of chain links, a full chain, putting it down the barrel, and maybe some nails or some like caltrips into the cannon before you fire. Now, when you shoot it, because these chunks of steel chain or these caltrips or these nails or whatever else you put in there are lightweight, they won't travel as far as a 6, 9, 12-pound ball, right? So they only travel out to maybe a couple hundred yards. But in the meantime, while that chain link is flying out there, spinning around, causing it's decapitating people, cutting arms off, it's chopping legs off, it is just shredding into a unit. Cannons up close are extra super deadly. And 
they have an extremely long range. Why? Because it's a huge musket, basically. It's, it's got a lot of gunpowder, black powder, and it's got a big-ass ball. And that ball can travel, you know, 1,800 meters. Okay, so how does that, how does that translate to the game, black powder? Well, um, it's an important part of any army. Now, some armies even have rockets or contraptions. Or some, some of them even have automatic cannons, Gatling guns, um, howitzers, mortars. These kinds of things did exist during the black powder era. So uh, guns form a unit together with its crew. So that is a unit. That is a nine pounder, I do believe. So that is a unit on the table, but in addition to the gun, you should have a limber, you should have horses, and those guys are, you would normally display them behind the gun, uh, simulating that it's not limbered up ready for movement, it's actually deployed. So it can only shoot when it's fully unlimbered and deployed for action. When it shoots, it can only shoot up to 45 degrees of either side. Now when you measure to a gun piece, you measure to the actual gun model itself. You don't measure to the base. You don't measure to the guy in the back you, or the trunnion or whatever they call it. You measure to the gun model right there. And the reason why that is, is some guns are bigger than others. Some guns have to be put on bigger bases than others. Uh, some modelers like to put all kinds of, like their horses and stuff like that on the base itself and things like that, and it's only for appearance because you measure from the gun. Doesn't The base is inconsequential when it comes to, you could even, if you wanted to, have a loose gun, pull the gun off, you could have a loose gun and you could individually mount your crew and stand them around them because you're measuring to the gun, not the base. I prefer to do the base just to make it all tight neat neat and tidy when it shoots it can shoot to the left and right up to 45 degrees visibility and range is drawn from the barrel and you have a range and here's the cannon ranges on the screen right here so let's look at smooth bore foot artillery which is that that is what that is that's normally a 48 inch okay if there is a visible target within half range or less it must shoot at the closest target in exactly the same way as infantry. If there's no visible enemy within half range, then it doesn't have to shoot at the closest target. It can pick any target. It can shoot at suitable targets except ones engaged in combat. It also receives the minus one to hit penalty if the target is not clear. Unlike infantry or cavalry, the cannon is allowed to shoot over the heads of other units when either the gun or the target lies on higher ground. But bear in mind the gun must still be able to see and there can't be any troops in the way. And the way you determine if there's troops in the way is if it can shoot over the heads of units that are both further than six inches from the gun and more than six inches from the target. Basically that represents dead ground. If you're either too close to the gun or too close to the target then you cannot shoot. Alright now on cannons there are three values. It's almost always, from what I've seen, three, two, one. And here's an artillery attack table. So if you are within short range, up to six inches, point blank, you get to roll three dice when shooting. That's representing the grape or the chain shot. When you're shooting up to half your range, that's considered medium. So for like a 48, it would be 24 inches. So up to 24 inches, you would get two dice. And then over half, up to your full 48, you get one die. So not only are you getting three dice at close range, yeah, so you roll the appropriate number of dice for the weapon's range. You're still looking for a four or better. That's a standard in the rules. Rolls of six indicate that the enemy unit is disordered. All the usual two-hit modifiers apply with the following additional modifiers. Artillery shooting at a unit in attack column, march column, or square, you're getting a plus. So if you shoot at something that is a block of units, you get a plus one. If you're shooting at long range, you get a minus one. So not only do you get less dice, 
but you get less chances to hit. And if you're shooting over units, then you get a minus one. All right, so now like, so imagine this unit's close, it's gonna get three dice and the plus one to hit, right? Okay, but more is coming. Okay, morale dice saves. Because when you get hit, you normally can roll a four or better per hit to, to reduce the casualties, right? Because the casualty is not really physical, it's mental. If you're hit at long range, like if he's shooting over the 24 inches at this unit, they get a minus one morale. So they have to roll a five or better to save. Makes So artillery saves are harder. It's more devastating, more destructive. Now, if you're at medium range or close range, you get a minus two. So you have to roll sixes to save versus those. So it's like it's, it has a higher penetration. So it does. it's more destructive. And that's what they're talking about canister. The shooting value given at short range assumes canister or its equivalent. Now guns adds targets. So if an artillery piece is shot, crews, horses, and limbers are ignored for this case. You're, you measure to the gun, right? And the reason for that is uh, the guns become disproportionately huge compared to the foot of cavalry regiment. Because you got your caissons, your horse teams, your limber. It looks splendid on the battlefield, but it takes up a lot of room on the battlefield. So the only thing that matters is that barrel tip. Okay, so if I have my gun right here and I want to shoot them, I can, right? No problem. Bang. If I want... If I wanted to shoot, if they, let's say these guys are all at long range, and I wanted to shoot them, I could do that if I was on an elevated position, like if they're on a hill, and these two units are not within six inches. If that unit was further than six inches, I could shoot at that unit. And I'd get a plus because it's in a column where I would not have got a plus for shooting in a group in line. And with them having deployed skirmishers, I would have got a not another. I would have actually got a minus for shooting at a unit that has skirmishers deployed. Now, when when we're talking about shooting over a unit, uh, you could assume that this building is here, right? I mean, if you have a terrain piece where you have this model up above on a hill, I'm like really high, right? If this unit can see that unit and they're not within six inches and this building is not within six inches of me, then I could still shoot. Because you can treat it as people, terrain, anything, as long as it's more than six inches from the gun, more than six inches from the target, and you could actually see them. All right, guys, well, that makes uh, artillery kind of deadly, but not so much because, okay, this unit here, it's rolling three dice to attack. This unit here is rolling one, two, or three dice, depending on the range. Uh, if you are mid-range, he's going to be, and that's probably where you're going to be most of the time, he's going to be rolling two dice, but the problem is you're going to get a minus two to your saving throw. So this one gun is equivalent to this unit, but better, in my opinion. I mean, it's hard to tell. Um, at long range, you're getting only one die to hit, and they get a, they still get a minus one to their wounds, but you do get a minus one to hit. Minus one to hit at long range, minus one morale dice. So cannons are really good. All right, guys. Well, that was it for artillery. I, I knew I told you it was going to be fast and furious. And then the next video, we should be uh, venturing into the realm of hand-to-hand. -hand, and that's another big portion of black powder that you need to know. That'll be in the next video. So come back when I upload that video. And I'll catch you next time.